Greetings. In this tutorial, we want to explain how NetFab simulation determines whether the deformation of part geometry during a build is likely to interfere with the recoder blade. Parts displacing upward through the powder and being struck by the blade is a common cause of part failure during actual builds. After discussing this issue, we will run through an example of a simulation that will trigger a warning of recoder interference. NetFab simulation works with a value of recoder clearance or tolerance, which is expressed as a percentage. Let's see how this works. In these diagrams, the gray block represents the solidified material of the part, and the blue area on top is the next powder layer. In the ideal case, with 100% tolerance, none of the previously deposited material has deflected upward into the powder layer. In the second example, an 85% tolerance means that the build has deflected up into 15% of the powder layer. This amount of deflection is normally acceptable. The default value for recoder tolerance in NetFab simulation is 20%, and if this level is reached or exceeded, warnings are reported in the log files, indicating that the part is getting dangerously close to striking the recoder blade. That's what we see in this third diagram, where the build has deflected upward into 81% of the powder layer, leaving a tolerance or clearance of only 19%. Finally, an extreme case is shown in the fourth diagram, where the part has deflected up through the entire powder layer and 25% higher, producing a negative tolerance of minus 25%. The part in this case would definitely be hit by the recoder blade and possibly damage it. To see recoder interference in play, let's go to NetFab simulation and open a suitable part file. Note the large overhang here that is very likely to deflect upward as it is built. Without making any changes to settings, we'll just click Solve. Provide a descriptive name for the part and store it in the directory of saved projects. After we load the simulation results, check that we are seeing the displacement, then play through the progress of the build. As the build gets up above the overhang, we can see that the part is starting to deflect upwards. Let's check for warnings in the log files. On the Results tab, click View Logs, and then the Mechanical tab. Scroll to the bottom of this log, and we'll see two warnings listed. One of these is not relevant to this tutorial, but the other one is. Scroll upwards slowly, looking for that warning. And here it is at about 6,700 seconds. Recoder clearance is reported as minus 1%, indicating a part deflection that extends up above the powder layer, so the part would be struck by the recoder blade. Let's see exactly where this happens in the displacement animation. Note the time value here of 6,711 seconds and we'll go back to the animation panel. Use the step forward button to move ahead until you see the time of 6711 seconds. We can see that when this part is deflected, the temperature rose in the material deposited at the beginning of the overhang. As a design engineer, you now have the evidence to suggest the need for a design change in this part. You could, for example, shorten the overhang if that dimension is not critical. Alternatively, you could add support structures to restrain the part from deflecting upward. After changing the design, you could rerun the simulation to see if the recoder interference issue was solved. If we go back to the log files, we can see a tab for recoder blade interference, which clearly shows the clearance or tolerance at each timestamp. Note that for most of the build, Clearance values were at very safe levels, well above the 20% limit. 
It was only in the sixth layer group that recoder clearance hit this unacceptable value of minus 1%. If we want to make our simulations more sensitive to recoder blade interference, we can adjust the value for recoder tolerance. Go to the Home tab, click Solver Settings, and you can see the default tolerance value of 20% here. If you want a safer, more conservative value, increase it to, for example, 40%. Also note that you can check an option here to stop the analysis if recoder interference is detected. So just to review what we've done in this tutorial, we explained the concept of recoder clearance or tolerance and how it's measured. We ran an analysis that produced a recoder interference warning, and we saw how to find that point in the simulation.